You are watching Access LaPorte County Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 16th meeting of the LaPorte County Board of Commissioners. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. I'd like to call to order the LaPorte County Commissioners Recording meeting. in progress. Wednesday, October 16, 2024. We'll stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Steve, would you like to start us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Commissioner Brzezinski? Here. Commissioner Gramarosa? Present. Commissioner Haney? Present. All three present, accounted for. Consider agenda. Motion. Uh, Madam President, we have a couple of additions for the agenda under requests. Uh, permission for Sharon Krasinski to approach the council for an additional $500 for Judge Thorne's travel account. Uh, that would be D. 9D, 9D would be uh, also Judge Soren's request for additional uh, permission to approach the council for additional appropriation. And 9F would be approval for Marquis Electric and WJE to solicit sealed bids for the Franklin Street Bridge fall of 2024-2025 rehabilitation further re provided drawings sealed bid due to the Port County Board of Commissioners on or before November 20th, 2024, by 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. And then there's two others that I'd like to um, adjust. Under 11A, consider seal bid opening for farm ground rental. We're going to take that off the agenda because actually it is FMEC who handles the bids for us. And that will be held tomorrow at the uh, Purdue Extension office at 4 p.m. for anyone who would like to join there for the opening of those bids. And then the other thing is we would like to move up 11B. Con um, we have the Center of Workforce Innovations and Agreement coming in for a, pre uh, for a presentation. We'd like to move her up to right after... Um, 6 A and B so that she can do her presentation and get back to her family. So we appreciate you coming out. Also, Madam President, I'd like to uh, Jen B remove that from the agenda and I would make a motion to, uh, to consider the agenda as amended. Somebody is logging in here. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm trying to make sure I have all these down here. Uh, 10 uh, B, are you okay with removing that? Did you catch the last one? I, yeah, I did catch that one too. I'm going to, uh, um, if you'd like to step down and second all those uh, adjustments, that's Feel free. <laughs> are there any you have comf are you uncomfortable with that you want to talk about? Um, there's th th there's a couple on here, a uh, couple of different things on here that are um, somewhat different. I know FMEC uh, likes to wants to continue to try and be uh, self sufficient in their funding. Um, I know that they currently get the uh, the money the county uh, should be receiving for the cell rental towers. Um, Considering we own that land and not FMEC, I mean, if okay. even though they're getting the money for it, should should they be opening the bids? And if they are going to open the bids tomorrow instead of opening them today, was that noticed properly to make that change? Since we did motion for us to get those uh, to get those done. I, I, believe, I believe the notice was for them to actually go to Mr. Biji's office. Mm -hmm. The actual notices to be presented. Right to be so, office, and but you know, so the way that the contract is written, I think that they would have the legal authority to go ahead and do so between the contract between the council and FMEC. 
between the right. commission and FMEC. All right, I'll, I'll have to look. I'll, I'll have to look more into that. Okay, so I'll step down and I'll second that uh, motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Okay. Aye. Moving on. Consider approval of the October second, twenty twenty four minutes. Motion to approve. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consideration of claims pay, starting with payroll. Commissioners, we have payroll for the period ending October 4th, 2024 in the amount of $1,463,909.77. Motion to approve payroll as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Operating expense claims? They would be in the amount of $2,802,608.98. Motion to approve the claims as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll proceed with the presentation for the Center of Workforce Innovations and Agreement. Lisa, welcome. Good evening. Thank you uh, for having me, Commissioners. My name is Lisa Doherty. I'm the CEO of the Center of Workforce Innovations, which is a nonprofit located in Valparaiso. However, we are contracted to staff and manage the Work One locations throughout Northwest Indiana, which includes a location in LaPorte. I am a LaPorte County resident as well, just as an FYI. My purpose tonight is to introduce the organization to you in the event that you are not familiar. My presentation will be brief. It, because it's brief and there's a lot of work that we do, uh, it, it may actually raise more questions uh, than provide answers. But please know that uh, Again, my intention is to be brief, give you a very high level overview of the work that we're doing in LaPorte County, and know that I am absolutely willing to come back and or attend, you know, other meetings uh, to fully, um, you know, explain and, and provide status updates on the, on the work that we're doing. You have uh, two documents. Uh, each there, I did provide one for each of the commissioners uh, and, and Diane. I'm happy to provide more. The first document I'm not necessarily going to go into, uh, but I want you to know that our organization is the entity in the seven counties of Northwest Indiana that provides this labor market data uh, upon request. Uh, the majority of the requests that we get are either from municipalities uh, from economic development uh, entities uh, and or employers. Uh, significant amount of data. We do host a, a semi-annual event uh, to review as we see trends changing. And of course, COVID uh, changed a lot. Uh, again, not going into that, but for your reference and happy to do a deeper dive on any of the data that you see. This is a regional view, but if you want county data, um, I can take it, I believe I can take it um, as near as zip code and census tract, which is some of what we look at so that we are sure to target uh, those communities where our resources um, can be of most value. I wanted you to have this document because it is a snapshot um, in the recent moment of the different types of initiatives that we are either leading, uh, facilitating, uh, convening uh, partners for in, in, in the community. And the, the way the information is presented is based on our strategic plan, which came out of several meetings with uh, stakeholders throughout Northwest Indiana getting that feedback about where we needed to focus, perhaps bring more resource. Most of our funding is federal uh, out of the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act that flows from the feds to the state. Much of it is based on formula allocation, 
you know, population, generally poverty, unemployment, those are all factors that go into the money that comes in. We are diversifying our revenue because we have to. Uh, you know, population, birth rate is declining, uh, workforce, uh, age, you know, working age population um, is, is getting older. And you know that we have a challenge uh, with workforce. Uh, there are a lot of folks that are interested in opportunities, want to be skilled up, but they don't necessarily know what those opportunities are. So we are trying to uh, be more inclusive of the partners that are engaged in our work, and we're trying to tap into organizations that help us find people so that we can connect job seekers with training uh, and or employment opportunities and employers with skilled workforce. So if you look at the inside of this document, you see the five different pillars. Um, I'm not going to go through every one of them, but I want to point out um, a couple, a few things. Okay, I'll be a handful of things uh, that may be most interesting or most relevant, uh, demonstrating how we're working with the communities. Uh, we have hosted a number of uh, workforce talent summits, including in LaPorte County, where we convene employers understand their needs, share the data, talk about the resources that we have available that they can access. Believe it or not, I got to shout this from the rooftops. They don't realize how many resources we do have available. Same with job seekers. We are the uh, recipient of adult education funds through the state, and we do have a sub-recipient that provides those services through Michigan City schools. There are locations in LaPorte that offer that. Of course, we want to get folks um, connected to those credentials because the more education that people attain, the greater their earning power is. We have a heavy emphasis on youth. Uh, one of the programs that we've brought to LaPorte, uh, both LaPorte High School and Michigan City, is a program called Bridging the Gap, where we are introducing students that aren't necessarily planning to go to college. Uh, in fact, maybe they don't even have a plan, but they are interested in being career or job ready. And so we're bringing resources, workshops uh, to them so that they get exposure to different careers uh, and employers that are interested in hiring them right out of school. We do a lot with uh, work-based learning opportunities where they can earn pay while they're being trained uh, and uh, going to school. Uh, we have a couple of grants where we are ser providing services to folks that have had some involvement um, with the justice system and they are interested in you know, re-entering society. We prepare them um, so that they have a better shot you know, at success and reducing recidivism. We recently received an intermediary and career coaching grant from the Commission of Higher Education through Indiana. You know that graduation requirements are changing, right? I hope everybody here knows graduation requirements are changing. There are multiple tracks. Um, we are going into schools with partners and offering uh, counseling, again, so they get some exposure to the different uh, industries, sectors, types of jobs that are available. Uh, of course, we want folks to go to college, but there's a lot of opportunity with the trades right now that didn't exist when I was a kid. Uh, and we're setting up pre-apprenticeship, apprenticeship programs in partnership with the trades and other organizations to get people on pathways. Um, we've established a local manufacturing, advanced manufacturing consortium. It's employer led that's giving youth opportunity to uh, be introduced. Manufacturing isn't what it used to be. When I was a kid, it was dirty, it was heavy lifting, and, and all that has changed uh, very much with technology. It's great opportunity. Uh, I just, a couple of notes about resources that we offer employers. We have dollars available if they're interested in training up, skilling up their incumbent workforce. Maybe they get new technology. Uh, we've had a couple of entities like the Michigan City Police Department that uh, needed to provide leadership training. Uh, as that workforce is aging, 
and we've seen a lot of retirements, companies are losing that intellectual um, you know, capacity and uh, they don't always know how to transfer the knowledge from the older workers to the newer workers. So we're providing training and supports to do that. Uh, there's no end to the partnerships that we have, uh, many with employers and uh, municipalities. We facilitate an education consortium that does have most of the school systems uh, throughout Northwest Indiana engaged. We share best practices with them, introduce teachers uh, to some of the different career opportunities uh, so, and counselors uh, for the students. We have invested and received grants for two mobile units, one in partnership with United Way, one with Ivy Tech. So we act, they actually have a semi that's equipped with training equipment that can drive right into communities that may not have easy access to us. So we're bringing workforce development to the communities. Uh, I'm of the mind that we have to transform how we're doing it because they're not lining up at my door. Um, the last thing that I would say is that in, in that vein, uh, we are partnering with communities to be more inclusive, um, creating opportunity hubs uh, in locations where there's not just workforce anchored in workforce development, but have wraparound supports. So for many individuals that seek those uh, resources, it's a one-stop shop. So they can access other partners that may have the ability to help them overcome barriers that prevent them from accessing training or workforce. There's a lot more, but that's the high level overview. Any questions? that I can answer. You know, I will say that I've, I've sat through some of the uh, strategic uh, meetings that you've had and you have a fabulous team. It's unbelievable how many people you have really strategizing on trying to help young folks and I really do appreciate what you guys do. Thank you. I do have a phenomenal team. I, you know, certainly couldn't do it with, they know so much more than me. <laughs> and have connections. So I'm glad that you've had a good experience and yes, know that absolutely. we are eager uh, to remove barriers and, and make our resources more accessible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on. We'll open up public comment. Good evening. Steve Hollowfield, 6782 East, 100 South. Uh, I'd like you guys to consider this ban, burn ban again, to keep it in place. We've had some rain. A few days ago, a neighbor's field caught on fire. He had a little bit of crop damage, nobody injured. Uh, the machine was saved. There were seven different fire departments there that day. It's only gonna take a few days. We're supposed to get up in the 70s this week. Very low humidity and wind pick up. It won't take long to dry this stuff down again. I'd like for you to consider it until at least harvest is over. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment is still open. Hi, this is Kalav. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. Tommy, you can go first if you like. Okay, this is Tommy Kalavik from 1316 Ohio Street. I'd just like to give a public service announcement and just let everybody know we have two more Saturdays remaining for our Michigan City Farmers Market at 8th and Washington Street. It's on Saturday between 8 and noon. They're in the Uptown Nurse District. And let everybody know that uh, next year, we're going to have to find a new location for our farmer's market because we got the development plan. Mayor Angie tells us there's going to be like 200 workforce development apartments going into the end of that lot. A lot of big things happening here in Michigan City right now. So she says probably going to be somewhere downtown. They were think, talking about moving it to Pullman Field and on the west side, you know, for the uh, to address the food desert. But the she also said the people, the, the collective, the same ones that run the Farm and Forge Farmers Market in Laporte and the New Farmers Market New Buffalo are taking it over so they could uh, provide with the SNAP and, and the EBT uh, of, of, for the low income uh, folks that want to buy their fresh food and, and vegetables there. So I just want everybody to know that and, uh, and a happy Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Commissioners. Good evening. My name is Kaylee Sampson, um, 353 North Clark, Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'm with the Blue Stem Solar Project. Um, I just wanted to come here to state. I know we're not on the agenda tonight. Um, we have a couple of supporters here just to show that um, there's active support for the project. Um, I did just want to say uh, we have been communicating with the County Highway Department um, to make revisions to our road use agreement, and we have incorporated their comments in our latest draft, um, which we have shared with the county attorneys, and I hope they've passed it along to you as well, um, and we look forward to seeing it on the agenda on November 6th. Okay. And, you know, I, I want to apologize to you. You did leave me a message, but you didn't leave a phone number. So you called the county number, so I was not, not able to get your number. So Sorry about that. <laughs> problem. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. First thing I'll, uh, Randy Novak, Chairman of the Fire Chiefs Association. So uh, I agree with extending the burn ban. The only circumstance that I would add is a caveat that if, if it's a special situation and they get permission from the local fire chief to be able to do something, because there are certain types of burns that uh, ag does that aren't near fields or kind of off and they're controlled and if the fire chief comes out and inspects it and says yeah this is not a threat and maybe they work out a deal where they stand by or do something then that would be allowed instead of you know just flat burn ban so i i would encourage that that's one thing second thing good evening randy novak president of fmec to address your concern about FMEC opening the bids with the fire, uh, the farmland, that was discussed. I approached the commission president. It was turned over to the commission attorney, an FME's attorney, FMEC attorney, to work out to figure out if it's you guys do it or if we should do it. We don't. We didn't. There's no preference that FMEC wanted to be the ones taking the bids. The commissioners wanted to do it. We were fine with that. It was determined that that was the way to go because the ground was part of the lease that FMEC has, and that's why that was done. So, And that agreement was made back in 2018. Was it not the FMEC agreement? It's been a number of years. Yes. Quite a few years. Right. The, and the current last lease payment on the ground was $23,000. So I don't know where those figures came out at the last meeting, $100 an acre. It was $23,000 with the last... Um, payment that was received beginning of last year. So, and and it's FMEC because the commissioners have never bid it out. FMEC asked to have it bid out because there's several farmers that aren't given the opportunity to bid on that. So that's why we approached and um, asked that it at least go out. So. And another thing I'd like to you to explain because I think this is important. FMEC actually works for us and so the monies that's being made doesn't go to any kind of other entity it's actually money being reinvested into the fairgrounds 100%. correct right so okay. F so the money that the county puts in the council puts into the infrastructure with the commissioner's approval is 100 percent in the infrastructure it doesn't go to personnel doesn't go to anybody else the money that fmec generates with rentals from um, the, the split that we get from winter storage, the split that we get uh, when we do weddings and different things like that, events out there, that pays for the staff and the personnel and other projects out there. So we subsidize a lot of projects. We just replaced uh, two refrigerators because voter, they're voting in the uh, small projects building. They needed a new refrigerator. So we ran out the refrigerator was delivered this week because the old one died. So we put new two stoves and stuff in there. FMEC is paying for those, not coming to the council for those. Thank you. Thank, thanks. Thank you. Do we have anyone else for public comment? Anyone on Zoom? Not me. Closing public comment. We'll move on to department uh, head comments. Good evening, Commissioners. Monique Thomas, HR Director. Over the past eight months, the HR Department and the Payroll Departments have been working collaboratively together with vendors uh, working on a time and labor system. I would like to request a joint board meeting with the Council and Commissioners to discuss funding for this project. 
<clears throat> As we continue to improve our workforce management, it's imperative that we explore the necessary resources to support this initiative. However, to move forward, we need to discuss potential funding options and align our goals with the budgetary considerations. I believe a joint meeting would be beneficial to discuss solutions and how we can secure the funding to make this project successful. At this time, I would like to ask for your approval to schedule a meeting with the council and the commission to discuss a time and labor project with the vendors that we've been meeting with. Motion to approve that. Uh, I'll second that and also uh, ask you could send all of us an email and either, you know, a uh, through doodle poll or um, teams meeting or whatever to get us to select some times and dates that'll work best for everybody. Okay. Usually it's before one of the meetings, you know, either before a council meeting or something like that. It seems to be good since all the council members are there and that counts for all seven of them. So, but whatever works for everybody. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. And also, um, I would like to propose and get your approval for an event for our county employees to encourage and boost morale. Um, a spirit week for the a week of November 12th through the 15th is completely voluntary and those that want to participate can do so by dressing up for each day and taking pride in working together here in LaPorte County. Um, I'm just asking, um, I know Monday of November 11th is Veterans Day. We won't be here, but the week of the 12th through the 15th. Um, we could do uh, Tuesday, Ties and Pearls Day. Wednesday is Hat Day. Thursday, Support Your Favorite Sports College Team Day. And Friday, a Pajama Day. <laughs> so I'm I like asking. it. I like it. I'd make a motion to uh, let her do that. <laughs> sounds, sounds fun. Second. No, we have a motion and a second. I'll just say one thing. I don't know how people are going to feel when they walk in on a Friday and we're all in pajamas, but um, with that being said, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, you know, Monique's idea for the food trucks that she's done today. Oh, yes. That, and thank you guys for attending that. That was super. That was so good. Uh, there was so much camaraderie going on. The people that, that I've known working at the county, you know, I've been here 18 years, that you never really got a chance to talk to. That was a really great, great idea. And uh, thank you for being so innovative. Thank you. Well, you know, and I think that really brought people from the community. I mean, I really at both places, we had businesses, nearby businesses sending their employees over. So it was really nice to have those. So I hope you plan some more next year. Thank you. With the approval. Yes, obviously. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Department head comments. Good evening. Good evening. Cheryl from Director of Building Maintenance. I'm here to approach council. I would like permission to approach council for additional appropriation for the following six items I have here. And um, the first one would be the Juvenile Services Center gym floor not to exceed $145,000. Um, I do currently have a quote for $132,350. $132,350. What? $132,350. Okay. Sorry. So this is for a welded gym floor. Um, I've been searching. There's no local providers in this area um, that does this type of work. So um, I do, even though I don't have the three bids right now, um, I would like to move forward with this project. Um, I am going to currently work on looking in Michigan and Illinois, um, but I do feel that it is going to be costly for the mileage that they have to come to do the floor. Um, so that's one of the items. Okay. Number two. And then also um, for water and sewage, I need $13,000 to um, for the remaining bills to get through the end of the year. And that would be LaPorte City Water, Michigan City Water, um, Wanata Water. Um, the next one would be um, LaPorte Courthouse Basement Waterproofing. 
um, for $48,389.70. Um, I do need to go back to the water. I don't think I told you it was $13,000 on that. Yeah, you did. Okay. All right. Um, so I did receive three quotes for the waterproofing of the basement. Um, I chose... Uh, the one for $48,389.70, which is $489 higher than our lowest bid. And um, I picked that one due to it includes two additional April air dehumidifiers. That's the only difference. Okay. Um, also, um, $7,522 for Corson which is our fire protection a service that we are contracted with. This is for um, an inspection and our inspections and a, a deficiency. And that should bring us through the end of the year. Mm, very good. Um, probably Number five, should. generator rental. Um, so we have previously been approved for the new generator at the J JSC for 300,000. That new generator is going to cost $238,308, which leaves us a remaining amount of $61,692, which um, I would like to use that towards the, the generator rental cost, cost of $172,600, <clears throat> which would mean I need $110,908 to to pay for that rental. Okay. So you're here to ask permission to go to the council for this. And number six, things. well, we he, she held, she's only given us five so far, number six. Okay. And the LaPorte Courthouse uh, water heater replacement for $16,900 and 63 cents. Uh, this is for the total replacement of two water heaters in the LaPorte Courthouse. It also included replacing the lines they were replaced with copper lines and that's also for the new shutoff valves um, which the lines were previously taped with electrical tape to repair the link the leaking and so there, are my six items the motion to approach the council for all of your requests I think we should handle these individually here. We have no money. She wants to go to the council to request money. That's that is so that we is have correct. A motion on the table. Do we have a second? Uh, no, I think we should handle these. So uh, I'll step down and I will second that motion. All right. So, so we can have discussion. Now we have a motion and a, and a second. Yeah, well, what discussion. would be the difference if you do them one at a time or do them all at once? We're giving her permission to go to the council. That's all she's asking for us. We don't have any money. And we're not going to make a decision on what she buys or what she has to replace. The council does that. So that she wants permission to go to the council. That's what we're giving her. That's, that, that is. Um, unfortunately, we've heard from the council that that they just approve the money. They don't look at the contracts or anything else. They just go with what we send them. So um, we should make sure what we're sending them is what we think we're sending them. Um, a couple of these are pretty straightforward here. Uh, the one for the uh, welded gym floor, I know you said you only had one quote for that uh, at 145,000 roughly. Um, that's obviously well above the, uh, the, the need to actually solicit uh, seal bids for that. Um, she said not to exceed one hundred and forty-five thousand, but it was or, actually one hundred and thirty-two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, in some odd sense. Very good. Uh, either way, we're above the fifty and hundred thousand uh, dollar mark. I, I, I think the fifteen hundred dollar mark. The may, may fifty thousand and hundred thousand dollar mark. This is, I'm going to make your life easy. Sure, go ahead. If, if you, you want to go before the council, you can't go before the council with one bid. You have to either go to a, a, a purchasing agent like Sourcewell and see if they're able to do it, or you need to request three specific bids and invite quotes from three specific vendors in the Midwest and get them. 
It's just not going to work with one, even though you've yeah, tried. I, so just yeah, so you know. Yeah. Um, I'm currently going to be working on that. I just wanted to get this project going. Um, and I, yes. Just telling you. Okay. Uh, I will get those bids. Quotes. And actually, you had a meeting with Adam Karanka, correct? And he helped you find some place in Michigan to... Um, I have been talking with Adam. Um, actually, I found a place in Michigan today. Okay. Um, I just I haven't given them all the information yet um, for them to quote that. So I'll tell you what the struggle is here, um, Mr. DiMartino. The struggle is that we're coming up approaching towards the end of the year. We have a meeting November 6th. The cutoff to go on the November meeting is November 4th. It's two days before the next commissioner's meeting because the auditor needs X amount of time for them to advertise and actually get it out so that we can get it in the November's meeting. Well, I have no problem with her approaching, but if you're going to approach, you need to approach with the correct information so you can put it on the agenda. Right. So I think that the thought the thought process here and we met with Adam on Friday was that she would go ahead and she would get two more bids. She had the one for the 132 um, 350 that was a local um, a local flooring store that does this kind of welding and welding fl welded floors and then she would Asked not to exceed 145 and then put it out and then try to get the other two. So, if you think that that's incorrect, we can just pull it off today. You know, we're, we don't want to do anything that we shouldn't be doing. No, I think she can, you can get on, you can, you can approach the council, but I think you need to approach the council with three bids or three solicited solicitations. Sure. If you don't get a bid back, that's fine. You just need evidence that you've attempted to get this solicitation so with three companies so i yeah, should have enough time to do that yes got plenty of time mm -hmm. yeah excuse me commissioner gramarosa seeing that november is the council's last meeting of the year um i can wait until the 7th so that you can have the commissioner meeting and decide okay what's to go forward so thank you but it pointing. was yeah but it was no, on the right. fourth right absolutely thank you for pointing that out yeah, yeah so you. then we'll we'll be able to get maybe if you can get that out to most of the departments because a couple of the departments have approached us already it was a concern thank you so then um are there any other concerns that you have What uh, what uh, waterproofing uh, services are that? Because these are all uh, fresh items that I'm just hearing now. What waterproofing uh, services uh, are you uh, are they going to be doing in the basement? Um, I had three quotes um, from three different uh, vendors. They are doing um, each um, vendor had a different name for their process. Um, the vendor that I picked, um, they are doing. Um, a dry track baseboard system and they're also doing um, there'll be two new s sump pumps put in and five air April air dehumidifiers and they also have I, I have all the information here but they also have a ever track um, I believe it's called, oh, Emmy Shield Pro Plus. Basically, it seals out moisture. It's It goes over the walls. Um, what, um, how much was that quote? That was 40, 48389 dollars and 70 cents. So she has three bids for that, um, Guy D. Martino. Is there a problem with that? There's not a problem. With it. Okay. No. But I believe what Mr. Haney was asking was what's going on. Maybe. Yeah. yeah what, what's the need for the. Yeah. I, um, I think that was we, what. We've had a lot of water leakage in there, I sure. know. Um, you know, and, and that's been an ongoing issue for years now. But I was just curious, as, like I said, what they were uh, going to do to address that. Um, and it j just for moving forward, like if you could get us this information before, uh, you know, now would be 
would be good, and we can look into those and see. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, these I've, are these are things that you've been over there mm -hmm. to look at, and you've addressed in the past, and yeah, yeah, and so been, here she's addressing what I'm, the need is. I'm I'm very ha I'm very happy we're finally uh, getting around to addressing these. Very happy. Um, I just wanted to know what was you know exactly what what we're going to do down there for 48,000 like i said this is tonight is the it wasn't on our agenda and I, this is the first i'm hearing it, which IT is good, has but we're equipment gonna down there that i know but yes. before the water was so bad they had to stand into a, in a plastic bucket when they would do anything to be out of the water and actually in something dry um again i just my 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 concern there is that you know we're we're just getting this information now and you know, this is the first I'm he the first I'm hearing that we're going to do something about it, which is good. It's very good. Um, it's just making a snap decision on something that we just hear about right then, when you've obviously been working on this for a while. It, it's it's good to have the information, then it can skip a lot of these questions and make the meeting go smoother sure. and faster. I don't think this was a snap decision, but we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Okay, moving on. Department, you're set. You have permission to go to the council. Department heads, do we have any other department heads? Hi, uh, Jeremy Sebecki from the Parks Department. I wanted to um, just give a quick shout out to the um, highway department this weekend Sunday we had um, a, a very large tree come down at the entrance to Creek Ridge County Park and actually trapped people in the park they couldn't get out um, and by the time I got the call and then um, I got out there Frank was already there cutting on the tree from the highway department and then Daryl showed up with the skid loader and stuff so we got that tree cleared but you know and then and then they were back on Tuesday before we were even able to get the run throughs done at the park. They were already cleaning it up taking hauling it away So wanted to, to mention, you know that cooperation between the departments and how much help we get from them It helps us out a lot and actually saved a lot of time getting people out of that park um, Also, just wanted to mention we got several programs coming up. I know it's fall. We got some pumpkin carving look at our website uh, LaporteCountyParks.org um, pumpkin carving contest and then a Halloween night hike with hay rides at Lure County Park. Those are on the October 22nd and 24th. And then we have a, a something new we're trying. It's a local flavors dinner there. It's uh, we have uh, our, our program staff is going to be cooking things from uh, they call it the taste of native Laporte. So things from uh, the, the woods and from you know things like that like elderberries and hickory hickory some kind of hickory soup and, and these things so um, Come sign up for that. There's there's plenty of spots still available on that So look at our website and then we also have in December we have a reindeer coming working with the library We got the reindeer coming uh, and and Santa Claus out at Lure County Park So keep an eye out for that as well Several of those are free programs. Uh, the only one that cost is the local flavors, so mostly free programs. There's some new things, and they're going to be some pretty pretty neat things for people to do. So, thank you. Well, I'd like yeah. to thank you and the highway department. You guys really do well working together. We appreciate everything you do. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Department heads. Do we have any more department heads? Closing department heads will go to request. Consider permission to approach the council to replace trailer. Shouldn't have walked away. <laughs> Should have just stayed. Yeah, I, I sent you you all an uh, email with a picture of the trailer we have. It's it's a 12-foot trailer. It's really old. Honestly, it's not serving the purpose we need it to. The, the ramp is deteriorated to the point that you can't walk on it easily without paying attention um, and, and we need a 16 foot trailer really is what it comes down to uh, we're gonna have mostly half ton trucks and and we we have one really big trailer that the three-quarter ton trucks pull like a Bobcat or bigger equipment but uh, we need this 16 foot trailer to be able to handle just about any other piece of equipment that's lighter that we'll be able to tow to, from park to park and I do need to go to the council because I will be asking to transfer some money into the correct account to be able to 
sounds good. Like, make a motion to allow you to permission to council. council. And and also thank you for getting us this information, those pictures, uh, and what you're going to be replacing with it uh, early enough for us to take a good look at it and know exactly what we're doing here tonight. We appreciate that. Yeah. And it's not an additional appropriation. I, I I should have mentioned I do have the money. So. So thank we you. have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Consider permission to approach the council for ARP money, and this is the Michigan City Commission on Social Status for African American Males. Good evening. My name is Stacy Benning. This is Tony Cox. We're both commissioners with the Michigan City Social Status of African American Males. I'm currently the treasurer of that board. Um, you should have received a prior correspondence from our board president regarding um, the prior allocation that we received, along with uh, various pictures of what we did um, with the monies last year that were earmarked for this event. Today, we're asking for permission from the commissioners to approach the council um, as we're requesting a $4,000 allocation to sustain our outreach initiatives targeting African-American males within our county. Thank you. I'd make a motion to approve, uh, to, uh, approve you to uh, approach the council for that funding. And um, also thank you for emailing all of us well in advance. We were able to take a look. The, the information provided, the pictures were all great. And I wish you guys all the continued future success and luck with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very thank much. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Moving on to Judge Thorne's court. So we we have a permission for Sharon Kanishki to approach the council for additional $500 for Judge Thorne's travel account. Motion to approve. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And then... Um, Approval of Marcus Electric J, uh, WJE to solicit sealed bids for the Franklin Bridge Fall of 2024-2025 rehabilitation uh, per the provided drawings. And the drawings are with Mr. DiMartino. And then sealed bids due to LaPorte County Board of Commissioners on or before November 20th by 4 p.m. Motion to approve. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion? Um, do we have a, um, a list of what the actual solicitation is going to read yet? Or, or they have, have to draw the it over? We do have the scope. Okay. Um, I have not, uh, and I don't Steel believe Steel repairs, concrete removal, counterweight bracing, ladders, removable guards, storage doors, and machinery room siding. Okay. And this is a two-year plan. Two-year plan. Um, again, it, it would be good to have... Um, to have had that information. I, I know you're prepared to hand it to me, but I that's a nice I stack. To, it. It you just received it as well? Okay. Um, well, so this is the the issue is that, you know, we're getting close to the end of the sure. season. So I, I believe that's why they want to be able to get this posted. And okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I haven't even seen it. So I, I mean, I'm looking at a piece of paper here, but I, I can't vote in favor of something I haven't seen. Okay. And that was literally just added to it. That's going to be potentially millions of dollars someday. Moving on to old business review of. Connie was with it. Uh, wasn't there two things for Judge Storm? Were they separate? The one was for uh, is five hundred dollars for travel, but he had a second uh, request. For permission to approach the council for additional appropriation and that was for more I think that was for a couple no of actually what um, what they had um, explained in the email was that they were allotted two thousand dollars in that fund and he had taken two conferences he had 
gone to two different conferences. And so in order to pay out um, and cover both conferences, he would need an additional $500. So that's all one motion. Okay, we're good then. Yes. I thought it was two separate motions. No. We're good. Okay, thank you. We're good. Thank you for asking. Um, moving on, old business review burn ban executive order. We did. Uh, motion to continue with the burn, burn ban. I believe it said on our copy there, November 6th would be we would review it again. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have correct? a second? Uh, I'll, I'll second that so we can uh, have discussion. So we have a motion and a second open for discussion. So go ahead. Oh, no, no, it's all right. No, no, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have had some rain. We haven't had a ton. Um, regardless of the outcome of tonight's vote, I think it's going to be important to um, to realize that all state laws and rules are still in effect when it comes to open burning in LaPorte County, and they always have been, um, and they'll continue to be uh, regardless of whether this does or doesn't go forward. Um, I, sp I spoke to a couple different chiefs and assistant chiefs around the county these past uh, this past week or two as I was going around uh, visiting some of the pancake breakfasts, and um, I, th I think part of the concern is some of the citizens are starting to get a little antsy, and you know obviously we lift it. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of leaves <laughs> that are already falling. Uh, at the same time, uh, the public has been exceptionally well behaved overall um, in this in following this and understanding how severe. Uh, the weather's been and, and what a threat it is to the crops. And of course, obviously, it's not just the crops that burn that you lose, but when you have large uh, swaths of wildfires that go like that, they threaten homes of not just the farmers, but neighboring subdivisions and everything else. So it, it's it's not just necessarily about the farmer's crops. It's also about life and safety and, and the homes that, you know, th there's a lot of subdivisions that are surrounded on two or three sides by uh, by farmland, uh, which is nice, uh, you know, to, to, to have that buffer from anything else. But at the same time, when it's dry, it can be rough. Um, one of the concerns that I know for a few folks um, that I talked to was that because people have been observing this so well, and it's the first time we've had a burn ban uh, in place since I've been commissioner. I don't remember when the last one was. It's, it's been quite a while. Um, that if we keep going too long, it may lose its effectiveness the next time we have to come around and do another one. Um, it's, it's, I understand people are getting antsy, and, and I don't I don't want them to think we're just continuing it for no reason. And at the same time, um, I think that I, I think probably a better uh, a better path, at least as far as I would be concerned, would be to have a uh, a burn ban warning and leave it up to the jurisdiction of the uh, of the individual fire department chiefs in their townships to determine what's best for their townships. Because in some areas, uh, it's a little worse off than others. I don't know if you guys realize. Uh, Realized I was out uh, the other night uh, during the rain that we had, and we got a tremendous amount of rain in some areas of the county, and then you get a little further south, and there was hardly any. Uh, you know, we, we got some, but not as much as, you know, we got two or three times the amount, I think, in Michigan City. So as I was out and about the other night, um, I noticed that just anecdotally. So I'm... Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would I, I would be inclined um, and, and I think it will I would I would amend your motion uh, yeah, if you're amenable to it uh, to uh, be a burn ban a a burn warning I don't know how exactly so before how you we... amend it maybe we can all speak sure yeah 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 okay. please go ahead so I actually talked to four different farmers and what I do is I pick someone close to the Kankakee River as far south as we can go someone midway point, someone out in Westville, and someone out in Fish Lake. And so in talking to some of the farmers and talking um, to some of the volunteer chief um, chiefs from the fire departments, they would prefer that the band stay at least for just two more weeks. There, it is very, very dry in South County. There were anticipating 70 degree weather and, you know, it's, it may be a problem in South County. When we make these decisions, it has to be for the entire county, unfortunately. We have the uh, president of the fire. Um, yes, please. Please approach. I know you had made some suggestions. I would just recommend instead of a warning, a warning is like a warning speed limit warning slow down nobody slows down nobody's going to stop burning that's why i think if you leave the ban in place but if somebody has a circumstance where they contact the
the local fire authority who has the jurisdiction in that community, and they give them the okay, then then that's them. So we're, you're kind of shifting it a little bit, allowing certain circumstances, but somebody's still controlling it. It's not just opening the door. So um, that way, because different counties, I mean, not different counties, but different townships have different, like as Joe stated, uh, weather. So I've added language, should you choose to go forward with this, or any specific burn that is approved by the local fire chief where the property is located. Okay. The other option that you have is you can give Mr. Sabi the ability, the authority to uh, to stop the ban so you can let it go for seven days or 10 days and it can be reviewed and you can give that to your EMA director should we get more rain in the next few days. So it's not stuck to, to the next meeting, which is approximately three weeks away. Part of, part so of you have that is, option. Part of the problem is, though, is if you don't get a significant rain over a long period of time, the corn standing out in the field dries out very fast. And so the fire that they had in Scipio the other day, where it burned, I think, 40 some acres, was all standing corn, but it was caused by the combine picking the corn. So, um, and they had, that's the one that I think they mentioned they had all the departments at. So it's, it takes a significant amount of rain, but there's some people that are going to burn, and it could be a complete dirt field where there's no exposure, nothing there, and, and if they contact the local authority, they could, you know, they might even stand by for some of these. So. I trust Randy Novak explicitly, and I would uh, stay with my motion to keep the burn ban in place until our next meeting. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in would, favor? If you don't mind, before, would you, would either of you be amenable to adding language that um, uh, Mr. DiMartino just suggested? Or any specific burn that is approved by the local fire chief where the property is located, as an exception? That's what Mr. Novak just yeah. mentioned, right? Yeah. Mr. I would, I, I would also... It, if Mr. Mersinski, is that would you that amend it to add you? that language? Yeah, that that specific language I would add. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I, I believe that the local fire departments have this, uh, authority in this to begin with. They do. But uh, to add it to the ban, um, yeah, that's a good idea. What I don't want to see is one fire department say, "Yeah, it's okay. You guys can go have a bonfire." and the fire ends up in somebody else's precinct. <laughs> uh, or a range was going back and forth saying, well, they're letting them burn over there. Why can't we burn here? Uh, I, I, I kind of mentioned this is the county-wide, but if the local fire department is willing to grant permission and supervise that uh, to make sure there's not a problem, uh, yeah, I have no problem with that. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second for the amendment? Uh, I will second that, and I would also uh, point out one more thing that just popped into my mind here as, as uh, Mr. DiMartino was talking, I'm looking out at the audience here. Uh, Purdue Northwest, um, their fireworks were canceled uh, for uh, uh, Pumpkin Fest, and I know they're still looking to hold that. Uh, can we put in the language of fireworks displays at the de discre discretion of the local fire chief as well? Um, well, because I, I, I know that was the thing. The fire chief was asked if they would come and stand by, and they refused. Well, the fire the fire chief out there uh, specifically said that as long as the county burn ban was in place, he didn't want to go against it. So, Correct. if we if we give the, add that language in there, at least it would at least give them the ability that they can at least set a date. So it's not like they're going to have it this coming weekend, but they'd at least be able to get a date set to roll with it because you don't you know we're as as it is now we're already a couple weeks after the festival. So right, I mean, the I, fire I, chief himself said he would be happy to come out there and stand by, but he would be violating the county's burn. Man. And his thing is, is if 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 I got to tell my neighbor they can't burn, why are we shooting off fireworks at that time? So with this grace, this this what would you call it? Um, well, well, how, how about this? Or, how about this language? Or any specific burn slash fireworks display that is approved by the local fire chief correct. where the property is located. And that local fire chief has to approve them. He approved the whole plan that went downstate. 
Mm -hmm. But he was willing to do it, and he was willing to stand by, but it was the county's burn ban that prohibited. So this will open the door for that. But again, I mean, a lot of the fire chief, a lot of the uh, volunteer fire chiefs have have the ability, even though we have the ban in place, if they're willing to be there. And it was my understanding that he wasn't willing to be there. He, he, well, I talked to him directly. He was he was willing to be there, but his thing was is since the county, if if he got if PNW got permission from the county, he'd be happy to come. Okay, yeah. that's what he said. So, so yeah. that, that would be uh, amenable with the, that addition that uh, Attorney D. Martino added. All right. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have second. a second? Yes. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I just wanted you to know that they are planning for asking. Come on, come on up to the mic, please. Introduce yourself, please. Mike Callum's a uh, resident of LaPorte and I'm employed by Purdue Northwest as a police officer. I was contacted today to ask if we could work it on the 25th. They're so looking to do the fireworks show again on the 25th. 25th of? This month. So okay, a week from this Friday. Okay. Yeah. Um, but obviously that's pending whatever comes out of today. And I, I also had a discussion with the fire chief at Westville, very willing to work with anybody, but he, the, the concern that Randy brought up was, was valid in that if he came out and stood by for a fireworks show at Purdue, why couldn't somebody else burn in the township? And that was his concern. Uh, wants to work with them, but also wants to abide by what the commissioner set for a ban. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. Consider sale of parcel 46-06-27-481-001.000.043. And uh, would you like to explain it, Mr. DiMartino? It's my understanding that Mr. Streeter has come to uh, the commission. There is land that the county owns which has no viable use. It's around his actual um, property. And I discussed this with the county surveyor and the county assessor. And so Mr. Streeter has presented a proposal for the commission to look at whereby he went out and got a survey of the land and he got an appraisal for the land. And the way that the procedure works is you all can look at it, you all can decide whether it's something that you as the property owner want to do. If that's the case, then it would have to be kicked over to the council and the council would have to prepare an ordinance approving. So if the council in and of itself wanted to ask for a second appraisal because the land is so small, the council could go ahead and, and, and do something like that. So that's where we are right now in the process. And President, I've been out there a few times and saw what Mr. Peter wants to do. Um, it, it's not only a, a good idea for him, it's a good idea for the county and for the city because the man wants to improve a business. And the, the way that land is laid out, it's a really screwy deal. Uh, the best thing we can do is let him have that so that he can uh, develop his business, which is going to be good for the county. So uh, I, I would uh, make a motion that we allow this, um, this project to go on to the council for consideration. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second that, uh, Mr. D. Martino. The amount of land here, because uh, he's not looking at the entire parcel, if I understand correctly, it's about two tenths of an acre or something like that. It's not. Well, it's sort of weird because we own part of it and the city owns part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's the area that we own. It, I, there, there's a new. There's a new appraisal. There's a new. Was that not shared? Um, yeah, it all came in the same packet. Yeah. There's an Indian Good deal. here. There's a, I have my uh, survey here. I don't. Um, so I have a question. So currently we own it. We own the property. We're not collecting any taxes on it whatsoever. 
And if we were to sell this, this would be putting a piece of property that we own that we're not doing anything with and putting it back on the tax rolls, correct? Uh, correct. So that, that right. So the, that piece of land or that parcel, he'll either combine it with his other parcel or it'll be a separate parcel. But I don't know what the tax basis is going to be. I haven't had the assessor go ahead and take a look at that. So do we do that or do we just give permission and then it would be the council that would actually investigate and see if that would be? Well, the council, will, the council would look at the appraisal. The council will decide if it wants some, some additional information. And if, and, if, and if the council agrees, then the council with, with the appraisal, then the council will prepare an ordinance for the sale of the property. Okay. So, Thank you, Mr. DiMartino. Yeah, so my, um, this, the, so I guess we'll take the two kind of separate issues here. The the property that's behind uh, Mr. Streeter's property there, that's a county property, it's kind of, it's almost landlocked, if you will, watch slash waterlocked. That portion of it, um, I can't see any reason why the county would need to maintain that. Um, the, the, the entirety of the parcel is actually listed as do not sell. Um, I, I know we haven't come up, found found why it's marked do not sell. It could have been some sort of um, uh, wetland uh, abatement or something that we did or offset or I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know for sure I would not have uh, any issue uh, moving forward with that area that's kind of landlocked there behind uh, Mr. Streeter's uh, to be able to to uh, get that not just back on the tax rolls, but actually be able to, you know, it'd be usable to somebody because right now it's technically if the county wanted to use it, we kind of have to hop into a, a boat and go around to it unless we went across Mr. Streeter's property. So I have no issue with that. It's just the way that uh, the motion is uh, worded here, I, basically for the sale of the entire parcel. And I don't know that I'm quite ready to move forward on the entire parcel um, uh, without, right. you know, without more information. So if, if there's a way to, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the survey that was done here and I do see some, some markers that are here and some different lines. I'm not, I'm not a surveyor, so I don't know a hundred percent what quite, all of it is, but if it's this area here, um, that's good. If it's the entirety of the entire property, I don't know that I'm willing to move forward on on disposing of the entire property at this point. So is there, uh, is that in the rest of the information that came across that I don't have? That's, or? My, that, that's my understanding, yes. Um, so as to the do not sell, mm -hmm. there's no clear reason as to why that was there. In the 1987 note, it does mention that a motion was made and seconded not to sell two particular pieces of county-owned property, which are a portion behind the county highway building along the railroad and the section between Stone Lake and Waverly Road. Uh, the reason for that Nobody knows. There's no deed or anything that says it's a wetland. There's no deed that says it's a conservation, you know, easement or 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 anything like that. If you, that's the information that I have. Okay. I don't have any additional information. Very good. Um, I don't believe he wants the whole thing anyway. He just wants access to come in off the Pine Lake Avenue, go across what is now county property which adjoins to his and then adjoins to the city so that he can uh, improve the driveway and own it and maintain it. Is Mr. Streeter out here? What he explained to me. I, I don't see him here, no. Um, would would it be, uh, would you be opposed to my amending uh, your motion to, uh, in, to uh, uh, forward on the sale of the uh, property that is, um, Trying to think of how what will be the best way maybe to phrase that, uh, Mr. D. Martino. Something, something along the lines of the, I don't know if landlocked slash waterlocked is the right way to phrase it because there's got to be just a little bit more there. But well, the again, or how however many exact you know if it's two tenths of an acre, three tenths of an acre, whatever it is, is there a way to fence that in a little bit? That way we're not sending it open ended to the council and we can um, uh, you know get get Mr. Streeter the portion that he wants without accidentally opening it up to disposing of the entire property at this point. Is Mr. Streeter's not here. It'd be nice I to hear from him, him to find now. out what he wants and what he intends to do. I Hello, I'm here on the Zoom. Oh, excellent. Well, you've heard the discussion, Mr. Streeter. I have. Okay, talk to us, please. Okay, so the 
what Joe is talking about is two, uh, three tenths of an acre, I believe, that is uh, tied directly to my property that I had uh, Mr. Hendricks survey uh, about a month ago. That includes the driveway that comes down um, from my upper property to my lower property. Um, the whole parcel is the the parcel that Connie read the parcel number would be the whole piece, uh, which is three, four acres. Adjacent. Adjacent. Adjacent, the whole thing. It's still shown as one parcel right now, but Mr. Hendricks has surveyed off the other piece. The markers are out there. Um, so honestly, I'm open to either one. Um, I would like the whole thing. Uh, I don't need it, but I think I could clean it up and improve it. Um, it's been quite the homeless uh, hangout down there. I don't know if anybody's stepped foot on that property. Uh, there's, oh, honestly, a 30-yard dumpster of trash down there. Um, it seems to be a hot spot to throw out all your garbage. I know the county came in uh, this summer and pushed back the tree line a little bit. Uh, there were some limbs hanging and stuff. Um, basically, uh, I'll be honest with you. I just don't want to ever see it develop. Um, that's where I'm at in my life. Um, I want to see those trees there in another 50 years. Um, and with some of the stuff that's been going on, um, I am just interested in that remaining the way it is, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I don't know if that helps you uh, or not. I think Joe has a map. I Connie has a map. Um, I'm not sure if Rich does, but um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, you know, here's one of the things. We have a piece of property. It's been sitting. We're not, we don't have it on a tax roll. We have a viable buyer. Um, one of the things that we talk about constantly is that we want to increase um, monies coming into in, in taxes. And here's a very good um, proposal where we have a piece of land that we've done nothing with and someone is willing to buy it from us and start paying taxes. So, you know, again, we have a motion. We have a second on the floor. Would you like guys like to vote or do you want to continue this discussion? For those of us who have known Danny Street over the years, uh, he's a smart businessman. He'll do the right thing there. I mean, you look at his track record. Uh, Mr. Streeter, and I don't know most people don't know this, he does a lot of things that never get recognition, a lot of good things. Then um, he's shown, he shown what his plan is to develop there, to not to develop the, the swamp land, but to get access to his business and to ensure that, um, well, number one, to clean it up and get the homeless out of there and get the trash out of there. He would be a good custodian for this. And like you said, also, um, we could get some taxes there. I, I, uh, I stand on my original motion to uh, allow Mr. Streeter to take his plan to the council and uh, explain to them what he wants to do. And I would encourage people from the council to go out there and look at it. Go look at it in person. And it's, it's hard to understand what it really is until you go there and see it. Once you look at it and see it, and Mr. Streeter uh, explains what he wants to do, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Moving on. Consider settlement approval of Hester's versus LaPorte County Highway. So, Commission, this was an automobile accident case that was um, handled by Mr. Friedman and apparently on October 3rd, uh, Ms. Gramarosa and Mr. Friedman went to uh, mediation in this matter um, and the mediated amount settlement that's before you right now is $19,000. 
Second. So we have a motion and a second. All those open for discussion. This fully satisfies this claim and and. Uh, yep. Soup to nuts. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Thank so you, adjourn. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.